I'm going to show you three things. Number one, how to make the biggest possible hole in the wall for the biggest possible steel beam for this house extension. Number two, how I supported the whole house using a simple propping system that costs next to nothing. And number three, farewell and methodically, you're going to be able to do it yourself in a confident manner. Now the aim for this new extension is to create an uninterrupted space free from columns along the entire width of the space to create a super cool interior space that links seamlessly with the garden. I don't want to compromise it by sticking a column or pier in the middle even though it's an easier proposition to build. I'm always thinking beyond the cost of the job of the build and instead focusing on the value of the end result. So first we need to prop up the wall under where the new beam is going and let's start with inserting our needles and if you want to know more about needles and props and why you should never use strong boys for this I explain the jargon, the mistakes and the pitfalls in my other video which I'll put a link to here. So start by carefully cutting holes or pockets along the wall at approximately one meter centers and these pockets are where we thread the needles through. In terms of height this is set by the top edge of where your steel beam is going to sit and we need to find the next brick course above the top of the beam and that will be the underside of our needle height. In our case the new beam is going directly under the floor above so we'll need to take the needles through above that floor which involves disrupting the rooms above that. For the pockets I'll use an SDS drill on hammer setting and I'll start with a 25mm masonry bit drilling a few holes close together and then start opening up these holes using an SDS chisel and this time I'll put it on a hammer setting. If you don't have much use for it in the future, this Titan hammer drill from Screwfix will do the job, but long term I'll look at spending at least two or three times that and probably use uh, a cordless option because I want to avoid cords when I'm doing these build jobs. You can often pick up needles second hand if you ask around but alternatively I'll usually use 152 by 89 millimeter steel eye sections which is a standard steel size. Never use timber for needles. And the needle length will be set by the thickness of the wall you're demolishing plus a space either side of the wall for a person to walk to physically get the beam in. Usually five to 600 millimeters each side will do it. So in this case, I'm going for a 1500 millimeter long set of needles plus some longer ones for the two end needles due to the arrangement at the gables. I'll need two props for each needle. So for this, we need 14 acro props in total, and you can rent these from your local hire merchants and they will deliver them and take them away for you at the end of the job for a small fee. If you read the guidance, you'll see that acro props are to be installed in accordance with the manufacturer's latest inst instructions. And that's an expression you'll see a lot in the building industry, but to help you, the things to pay attention to are as follows. And you should support the props on the base on adequate battens. You can hire scaffold battens, or as I did here, use your roof uh, timbers since they are 200 millimeters deep. Don't forget to fix the uh, diagonal and longitudinal bracing, and this stops any horizontal racking, which is especially important for where you have props exposed to the outside. Whilst tensioning up the props, you're trying to eliminate any gaps. You cannot afford to have even a single millimeter of movement, so have steel shims and steel folding wedges at hand, which again you can get from your steel beam supplier. And at the same time as tensioning the props against the needles, hammer the steel shims into any gaps to get the needles hard against the structure above their supporting. I always write a method statement where I go through the whole process in advance on paper so I'm clear about what is happening 
and I can then share this. And in this case, I do have someone to help me. I'll read and reread my structural engineer's notes and I'll hassle them with any questions that I've got. Now with the needles and props installed and tensioned up, it's time to get a skip delivered, grab a sledgehammer, take a deep breath and start knocking out the wall. If you're filling your skip full of bricks, the maximum size that the lorries can lift with that weight is an eight yarder. So don't order bigger, or if you do, just fill it three quarters full with brick. For this demolition, it was just the two of us and the whole thing took about uh, two or three days once we had the pockets cut. Some other things just to bear in mind, remember to tell your insurers. Don't be scared to ask your structural engineer lots of questions. Ensure you've got a safety plan completed and that you have adequate safety wear. And with the wall knocked out, it's time to put the steel beam in. You can see how I did that in my next video, which I'll put a link to here. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to help me. Subscribe for more and thanks for watching.